Hey guys, my name is and this is Cobra. Welcome to the series where I teach how to build a Discord.pub music bot for your server. Today, um, we're not actually going to be doing any music related things, but of course to build a music bot, you need to first build a bot. We need the actual bot shell, so we're going to be doing that today. Uh, even though I said I wasn't going to be doing an awful lot of stuff from the old series, I did want to at least do this because this is kind of necessary for the music bot. And this works for people that haven't seen the, the previous series at all, so it should be good. So we're going to start by making a file structure. Um, so we're going to create some folders. Oh, I can actually, whoops, I don't know what I've done. Okay, we're going to use this up here. So the first folder we're going to create is just called bot. And the other folder we're going to make is just called data. We don't actually want that inside it though. If I move it in here, there we go. Uh, so we want bot and data and we want those two to be separate. And then inside the bots folder, inside the bot folder, we actually want a folder called cogs. Uh, which we'll come to later. And outside of all these folders we want a few files. So the first file we need is one called launcher.py or whatever you want to call your bot. It doesn't really matter what you call this but it's just launcher.py. Um, well, I'm just calling it launcher.py. In our data we need a file called token.0. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need to be called this. It could be called token.txt if you want. Just so long as you uh, get the uh, token.0 so long as you handle it in the git ignore. Speaking of the git ignore while I select the linter because apparently um, Visual Studio Code is too happy with me. Yes, there we go. <laughs> the, uh, the git ignore in the project should cover most things. I've used git ignore.io to create this one so it should uh, cover all operating systems. It, should, it covers a decent number of IDEs. I'm fully aware it doesn't cover all of them but it covers the most popular ones. Um, so you can just use this git ignore if you want. There's nothing wrong with having extra stuff in the, in the git ignore. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is our token. So we've, uh, to do that we need to go to the Discord developer portal, which is here. Uh, and then we need to get our token from the bot. So I'm going in music series, go to the bot, and uh, copy. I'm just going to copy the token from here so I don't reveal it. Uh, the link to the Discord developer portal should be in the description below. If it's not, let me know um, so I can add it in. We're going to be using our music series bot, and I am just going to take this off screen while I add the token in because, of course, I don't want to leak it. And now the token is in there, we can come back out, and everything should work. So, <clears throat> first file we need to do is our launcher. The launcher file is is very simple. So we're going to be doing some imports that are going to throw errors for the time being, but we're going to sort them out later. So we're going to do from uh, bot import music bot. And then we're going to have a main function that is going to do take, that is going to set bot to be music bot and then bot.run. Oops. Bot.run. And then if name equals main uh, main. Uh, so this bit down here at the bottom. All this basically says is um, if this is the file you ran, run this. So if this has been imported somewhere else by accident or whatever, this won't run. If it's just the file you run outright, then this main function will fire. And this main function will then create the bot and then run the bot. So now we actually need to make the bot. So if we go into our bot, oh that's nothing. So if we, we need to make two new files in here. We need to make one called bot.py obviously. And we also need to make one called init.py. Now the eager-eyed will know uh, will notice that's actually, oh the, that one in the wrong directory, I used to go there. Uh, the eager-eyed among you will notice that this directory structure looks a little bit different. This is a slightly optimized one from the from the discord.py, from the main discord.py series I mean. So this directory structure looks a little bit different. I personally think it's, it's better. It's more conventional anyway. But it has the same sort of scalability and it's not a huge amount different. So we're going to from dot bot import music bot in here and that's all we're going to put in the init.py. That will also throw some errors, you don't need to worry about those for the time being. Now we're going to come to our bot.py and we are going to basically code the entire thing. So from pathlib uh, import bot, I do have some code next to me here this time. So I actually kind of at least half know what I'm doing. I can't guarantee I know fully know what I'm doing, but it's fine. Who can you trust in this day and age? So we're going to create a music bot. Oops. 
and it's going to import from commands.bot and we're going to give it the same uh, default setup as we did before so we're actually going to load our cogs in slightly differently we're going to do self.cogs equals p.stem for p in path and then do that and then dot glob and then we need to do from slash bot slash cogs I'm pretty sure will work oh actually slash dot py just so it doesn't pick up any extraneous files so this is using the path loop library this is exactly the same thing as the previous series did it's just using the path loop library instead which is a little bit nicer looks a little bit cleaner and then we're going to soup it in it our bot so we're going to part we don't need to pass self actually uh, command prefix equals self dot prefix we're going to be making that function or method I should say later and we're also going to pass case insensitive equals true now what this will do is it will mean that the casing for your commands doesn't matter so say for example if you did a, a play and play uh, these two would do exactly the same thing so we don't need to worry about it so after we've done that we can basically just build the bot a lot of this is going to be quite similar from the last series so we have a setup uh, self. We're also going to be uh, adding some um, and in some log messages because why not? Uh, so for cog in self dot cogs self dot load extension, and then we do almost like an import. So this is uh, the load extension doesn't work with directories. It loads on it works on imports. So it call is it import liberal import spec? I don't remember what the module is called, but it basically uses that to to resolve this string into a, into a relative import path, or I think it's an absolute import path. I'm not sure, and then it will just load everything. So we can just say loaded cog cog, and then and that needs to be a format string, and then we can print setup complete. Uh, these log messages really are not necessary, but I like to have them. I think they're, they're good practice so you can see what the bot is actually doing. Um, it just makes sense. So we're not going to uh, bother with version numbers this time. We're also not going to bother with the readying system this time because we're only using one cog for the series. But um, <clears throat> you can include those things if you want. If you want to know how uh, more about that, and you can look at the old series or the, the main series. Again, it has information about that. Uh, we're just loading in the token now token equals f dot read okay uh, prints running bot and then super 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 dot run uh, and then we need to pass the token in and then we also want to pass reconnect equals true uh, what this will do is it will attempt to reconnect to discord if it fails so it's just a little bit of a fail safe really so next up is the shutdown systems I'm actually going to show off a slightly different way of doing it that allows you to perform all the shutdown tasks you want on a control C in the terminal. Of course, if you're running the bot live, you'll want to create a shutdown command. Um, and this method can sometimes <laughs> cause the bot to get a bit confused if you're using um, a shutdown command. So I would use this with care. Or if, if anyone can find a way of, of allowing both systems to work um, harmoniously, then uh, let me know. Uh, but for now we're just we're just going to do it so we can um, shut down the terminal. If you're using Sublime, you want to use an actual shutdown command. Um, this function is fine. Uh, well, actually, a wait. Uh, well, if you, if you run the bot through a terminal, so in in Visual Studio Code you can open up a terminal and you can run the bot from here, and you can also close the bot from here. Uh, not all IDs allow you to do that. I know Sublime doesn't. I don't know about other IDs. I don't know what anything like PyCharm does. But if you do, if you do have a terminal, and you want to shut the bot down using the terminal, you can do await super dot close, and that will close the connection to Discord. If you aren't using a terminal and you and you want to use a shutdown command instead, I would recommend using self dot logout instead, as that tends to be more reliable when it comes to actually doing say shutdown in your server for example 
Um, I haven't found a way of making it so you can do a super dot close here and a and a shutdown command where everything works and that, that's including like a database connection scheduler it might work fine for this bot but everything just gets a bit confused otherwise <clears throat> yeah I just thought I'd show that off anyway in case anyone wanted to know how to potentially do that um, uh, I just realized this actually shouldn't be yeah, that shouldn't be that there you go uh, so closing on keyboard interrupt. So this is the function, or this is the method that gets called on the keyboard interrupt. So a control C doesn't just raise a keyboard interrupt like it does in most instances. The bot actually, or the, the API has a, a, a method that, well, it's called close. Uh, that is called, and you can override that, and you can call super dot close. If you have other stuff, we are going to be putting other stuff in the shutdown later. So that's why it's kind of looking a bit weird at the moment. Um, there is going to be other stuff in there, so it's not just completely wasted space. Um, now after we've done that, we can just handle the, the standard uh, events. So on connect, do print, <coughs> no way, that's a F string in the plan, but never mind. Uh, not just, that's because it's an F string, because it's the wrong uh, thing. <laughs> so connected to, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here, I'm doing the on resumed. So we can have, get the latency. Uh, and then milliseconds, and then we want self dot latency. Did I make I, after all that and talk about f strings? I didn't even make this one an f string. Um, and then multiply that by a thousand to get the milliseconds. And then you want to do that in there. I think to off on resumed. Uh, if you're doing anything with AOS QLite or any sort of asynchronous database, you want to uh, form your connection database here when the bot connects, rather than the on ready. Uh, in case you did want to do stuff with the database. We're not going to do, be doing anything with the database in this series. Um, but in case you did want to do stuff with the database on top of this, after you um, start uh, using this guide to, uh, to then make your own super bot. The print bot is connected. Cool, we don't need two lines on a method. And then async def on ready. We're here, we're finally here, we're finally at the on ready. So we can get self.client ID. Uh, this is completely useless for this bot, but I did actually want to uh, share this as this is really helpful if you want to get an invite link for your bot, because this bot will technically work multi-server. So I just I did want to show this off because it makes things a lot easier. So you can do uh, await self.application info ID. So this will get the client ID from Discord Developer Portal. When you're creating the invite link using the all two URL uh, util that Discord's or that the wrapper gives you, you can simply now just pass self to client ID instead of having to do all this every time. Just makes things a bit nicer. Um, <clears throat> so I thought I'd just show it off for, uh, for the hell of it. Uh, we don't actually need anything in there. We're not going to bother with async def on error and async def on command error for the time being. I will talk about those later. Um, but we're not really going to deal with that. So now we're going to get our prefix. So all we're going to do is just returns dot when mentioned or, uh, and then we're going to set the prefix as plus again. And then we need to pass the bot and the message over because commands dot when mentioned or returns a, a callable of its own. So we actually need to pass. Uh, so we actually need to to call this callable, and we need to pass the bot and message. To it, it's a really weird system, um, but commands that when mentioned or uh, I'm, I I don't know why this returns a callable. I'm going to be honest with you, but there's got to be some sort of back end stuff that's happening there. Uh, if you want to do custom prefixes, I did have a video in the main series on how to do that, so just go and have a look at that. We're not going to be covering those in this series. Uh, so anything process commands self message. We're gonna have our own custom command processor as well, because why the hell not? Uh, CTX equals await. We don't really need it for this bot, but I just like having it there. I like having the extra control. So message equals class equals commands dot context. <clears throat> and doing it this way also allows you to kind of create your own uh, context object should you wish to. So you could probably create a context object up here. Import. Uh, or have it inherit from commands.context and add some extra stuff and then pass that class in here 
and that'll be interesting. I haven't actually experimented with that yet, but I kind of want to see what sort of stuff you can do. Because I reckon there would be some stuff that's really useful um, to get, but I, I, I'm not sure. You, you could actually probably get like a prefix from here. You can do a prefix and then you could uh, you can pass, you probably have to lambda it in. I don't know, you could, you, could, you could do it in the, com the context invocation. This is completely unrelated to music bots. Um, but I'm just, just thinking of cool things you can do. So you could probably put like a prefix in there. Huh. Uh, I, I definitely want to like experiment with the sort of stuff you can do with custom context and stuff because I never really thought about doing that but it, it makes sense when you think about it and the final one we're going to do is async def on message and of course we need to pass self.message in and if not message dot author oops, dot bot await self dot process commands message and that is our file so the bot now should work <laughs> we will see i don't know why there's two i don't know why there's two things there it makes no sense uh, also another trick if you're in vs code right click sort imports it does wonders um so we can create our terminal using control shift apostrophe in vs code <clears throat> and then as i said before i'm running multiple versions of python so i need to specify which version of python i'm running so it'd be pi-3.8 and then launcher.py and then that should run without any errors we will see so you got the oh we we probably want to do some string formatting on here actually oh come on vs code there we go uh so we uh thousand separator and then to zero significant figures just so we don't get stuff like this but the bot is ready so presumably it turned on fine uh and here it is yes it did carb bot is online as well don't quite know why that is <laughs> Um, that's not supposed to be online, I'll have to look into that. But um, <clears throat> the music series is the bot is the one that we care about. And that's currently online. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we could do we could do our plus help and we can get our default help. We're not going to be overriding the help in this again. I made a different uh, video about that in the main series. But as you can see, the bot works and we've got a thing running and it runs the right token and everything. So now that we have our main shell, we can start working on the music systems. You can see we needed this to be able to do that, but we can start working on them now. As always, if you have any questions, then feel free to leave them in the comments. Or if you want, you can join a Discord server using the link in the description. While you're in the description, I also have a lot of links to all sorts of other different socials. You can find me, so if you want to follow me on Twitter or Facebook or something like that, all those links are down there. But yeah, that brings us to the end of the video. If you liked it, then say hello down below. If you really liked it, then consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. If you really, really liked it, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Of course, you don't have to, but a really cool thing of you to do. Then I might not like to thank my super patrons, Darky and Jackster, and I'll see you next time where we actually start setting up the music cog. Um, there is quite a lot of stuff to do for that, but yeah, we start setting that up in the next video. So I'll see you for that.